it's Friday night, and are you ready? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as we are the hosts, uh, we are lucky, so we actually can have uh, two presentations uh, from Estonia today. So, the president did the first one in the morning, and uh, I have the chance to do the second one. So, try to be fast and uh, interesting, so you can get sleepy. Um, where to start? Okay, there was a visual light communication coming from Japan. I started to deal with Japan uh, last year. The reason for that was that I was actually sent to Japan uh, by my ministry and uh, the goal was that please go to Japan and, and see if we should uh, continue to, to invest uh, our, our people's time and, time and money uh, in the mar on the market or, or not, or we should close down our, our enterprise Estonian office in, in Japan. And I actually, I have to admit I didn't know anything about, about Japan before that. Okay, it's a big country and it's a huge economy and uh, it's, it's a very rich country, but but uh, I was very surprised to see that uh, it's the, the very technologically very advanced country. If, if, if you think about Japan, I think the first thing you think it's the high technology. All the TVs, all the, all, all the electronics, everything, Japan. Like if you say Germany, you, 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 you think quality. And, in, and with Sweden, you think upper. But... Uh, <laughs> No, that was a joke. <coughs> but, but I was surprised that, um, yes, uh, if you take electronics, then Japan is the number one country in the world. But if you take information society, if you take information systems, Stone Age, totally. And I was amazed, like, how come, like, uh, how, how it can be, like, uh, so, and it can be. So every country, makes their own choices, and this has been their choice. And if you start thinking about like, like how advanced is Finland, for example, or how advanced as a country uh, from e perspective is, is Sweden, for example, the best way to do is, is compare with, 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 uh, with other countries and try to calculate how many years it takes for Japan, for example, to reach a level of Sweden. Okay, actually I can't do that calculation because uh, I don't know your ID so in, in, in so details. But I, I actually did the calculation with, with Estonia. So what Japan actually lacks at the moment? Um, first of all, um, they don't have digital name. So they only have their own names. So, but if you, have, if you don't have a digital name, in our case, I mean in Nordics, it's most probably it's the social security ID or something like that. So if you don't have a digital name, you cannot put different information together. So the information in one registry and the information in the other registry, you cannot put that information together if there is no digital name. That's the same problem what, for example, UK or France have in, in, in Europe. So if you cannot put information together, it means that you cannot create the perfect public service because uh, if the service involves different ministries, the person has to actually has to run from one minister to another with papers, and then that has to be the connection point for all this information. So, okay, Japan has understood that they need digital name. They will create that. Uh, the project end date will be in somewhere 2016. So then they have actually sorted out which kind of uh, digital name they actually will take. To implement that, it takes at least another five years. So, uh, when you have a digital uh, identity, if you have this, you can actually connect data, there's another problem. What should be a tool to actually connect this, uh, different registers? So, you need some kind of technology, like we have uh, this XRO together with Finland now. Again, maybe five, six years implementation. So all in all, it's, it's 10 already. Okay, now they might have, or they might want to have a digital signature. Um, we were lucky. 
we were able to copy it from Finland. Thank you. Yeah. I still have to say that we added enormous innovation on top of that. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was your engineers who actually told us that make it mandatory. Yeah, that was the innovation. So now it works in our, our, our country and doesn't work in your country. So thank you for that. So, and it takes another. Like, for us, uh, actually, st we had this car ready for, with, 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 with services in year 2000. But the active usage started actually 2006. And uh, it even was 2012, I mean 12 years after the first implementation, we saw the significant growth in that area. So if you add all these kind of steps, and you cannot, you have to do the step, by, it's step by step. You cannot jump from, 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 from the beginning to the first uh, step or fifth step. You have to do it piece by piece. 20, 25, 30 years. And it's, a problem, it's, it's not a problem that you don't want to do that. Yeah, they, 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 they really want to do that. that but with, with big societies, the implementation just takes time. So why I'm talking about this is that um, I think the most important thing when you build this kind of information society is collaborate and learn from others. Estonia has been lucky. We have had great neighbors. And first companies who actually came here after the uh, 1990, 1992 were Scandinavian companies. And as your companies already relayed on, on, on technology back then, it, mean, it meant that, that also computers came, came, came to our land. And we, we were able to start from the scratch. That's important. I will come back to this. But here today, I'm, um, I'm telling the story of E-Estonia. I'm not telling the same story that the president did. Uh, the question that was from the audience that do we have something to learn from other countries uh, from the Nordics? Uh, yes. I totally envy, for example, uh, the, all the e-invoice e part, what, what uh, Denmark is doing. Uh, I really like, uh, for example, Sweden, how they actually think through all the public services. If, even though if, if it happens on paper, still it's it, 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 like in Estonia, uh, if the child is born, you have to uh, fill the child support money uh, form. In, in Sweden, it happens automatically because the country, the government actually sees that the child was born. So obvious, easy. From Norway, hmm. Okay, uh, from Norway we can uh, learn how to spend loads of money on IT, of <laughs> course. But that's, that's not the point. So coming to my presentation, uh, I, spend, I don't spend too much time on, on our digital agenda because I think the focus is are the same for, 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 for all the countries. I mean, like, uh, we all have to improve our infrastructure, we all have to improve our skills. So I... Uh, Rush, rush it through, but uh, I will stop in, in some certain places that are important for my eyes, I think. Uh, you can find actually the English uh, version of Estonian uh, digital agenda on this page. Maybe we are lucky and we can add other countries' digital agendas also here. So, uh, okay. So the goal, um, Estonia doesn't want to be the best uh, e-country in the world. Uh, the, the ranking, we have, we have the 21st, yeah. <laughs> yeah, even the France was six, yeah. All right, has to be a, has to be a normal survey. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so we have to catch up. But the point is uh, for Estonia, as we are still recovering from Soviet Union, uh, we have to focus uh, on, 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 on cost and, and economical growth. So uh, we don't have an uh, enormous amount of money to spend on IT. I was amazed, Rico. Do two billion euros per year on IT. Is 
Estonian ICT and government, uh, government ICT budget, uh, including all salaries and investment money, is 50 million euros, 5 zero. Well, actually, that's true. Like you are number one, you have to spend more. Uh, we have 20 worth first, so we can we can spend less. But the point is that the government has to take take care of infra, uh, of, of, of of the of the environment. I mean, like uh, before the recession, uh, there was actually the private sector who lead the innovation in Estonia. The banks, the telecom companies, uh, basically all the large companies, they they lead in innovation. After the recession, uh, it it, it is government, because uh, uh, the big companies belong to to Finland and Sweden, and they don't want to innovate anymore. So I don't know what's the reason, but let, let it be. So uh, the government has to run the run, run take the, has to take the lead, and the Estonian government is actually taking. So the four areas uh, where we actually uh, spend money and uh, focus are here. So um, going through them uh, one by one, let's start with, okay, before we start, some basic principles uh, that is important to understand if you talk about Estonia. Uh, first of all, uh, the president touched that issue. It's a trust issue. So, uh, we, whatever we do, uh, we have to uh, build the system this way, our pro pro processes this way, that actually your own citizens are actually trusting you. Uh, with this slide, for example, we want to show that and say that uh, the confidentiality is not an issue. The control is an issue. I mean, the data belongs to the citizen. And whenever the data is used, the citizen has to have a right to actually see how it was used, why it was used, why it was changed, so wh how the, why the data was manipulated. So it, ha it has to be transparent. Uh, and it is, actually. So in Estonia currently, if you want to, in any, in any registry, in any public registry, if you want to know what has happened with your data, the registry owner, they have to provide the data. It doesn't have to be a, an e-service on the web page, but, but you, they have to provide the data. We would like to make that issue even, even, even uh, more concrete and, and uh, more valuable, because uh, that's, the, that's the cornerstone of trust. Uh, one of the videos that uh, Anders showed today uh, was the, the guy with uh, broken legs. And uh, it was said that uh, people don't fail, technology fails. What is interesting with this trust is that uh, if you have been able to, to keep and build that, that trust for many years, uh, we see that um, even if the technology fails, uh, we will be forgiven at least twice. I mean, like, uh, you know that there is an e-voting uh, in Estonia, and uh, even, yeah, it, it won't happen, of course, but even if it, if it happens uh, one day that, that some, someone is able to compromise our, our voting system, for example, of course we have to cancel the votes. But as our people have felt uh, and have seen the concept, and then have felt the comfort uh, what that service actually provides, uh, they will to tell us that, okay, Technology failed, yeah, bad, but fix it, because it was good to use and we want it back. So the same thing with taxes, for example, like the automated tax declaration, what all the countries here, of course, ha are having. Uh, I think none of our citizens want to go back and start filling these taxes again on paper. So they will forgive us. If the technology fails, you have a chance to, to, to uh, build it up again. But uh, we don't want to risk that with that, so trust is important. Uh, what's, what's in, important in Estonia is that we still keep the principle that the data should be asked from the citizen only once. So if there is a registry that already has that data about me, uh, I can tell to another registry that, like, I don't give this information to you, you should get it from that registry. 
And uh, of course, people are actually looking after, after it, but, but we're also looking after it uh, on, on, on central level. I mean, like, uh, we basically log all the databases and then tables and then attributes, so we could, we could actually see is there a, uh, is, is, is there a mis misuse, it, or, or this rule is uh, misused or not. So that's the another important principle uh, with Estonia, so that we could continue with distributed architecture what we have. So let's go to the point. Chapter one, skills. Uh, during the next seven years, uh, we will invest, uh, not heavily, but still, uh, in, into IT skills. The point uh, of this investment is, of course, uh, yeah, youngsters are getting smarter and smarter. But also, we see ICT as a competitive advantage for Estonia, and it is not like, the ICT sector is doing really good. Uh, there's basically, the un unemployment rate in, in ICT sector is zero, basically. You have to be an idiot if you don't find a job in, in ICT sector. Sorry, who is un unemployed at the moment. <laughs> but but uh, what we see is that other sectors, like, uh, especially these, these, these soft areas, like, like lawyers and, and, and other similar people, they should find competitive advantage uh, in, in connect, connected with, with ICT. What my point is that, um, uh, and I still cannot understand why, uh, if you talk about that you can actually create a company in Estonia with 18 minutes, so to create a company with 18 minutes, is this kind of project, is it an ICT project or is it a law project or process project? I think you all agree with me that the ICT part is like this, and uh, all the, 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 the rest, all the environment around it, it's like all the rules and principles, like, it's like this part. So, and this, is, this needs different, kind, different type of engineers. And that's the point, like, if you talk about that we will, in, in our digital agenda, we invest into the skills, of course we invest into robotics programs, etc. but also we want to turn areas that are actually not so internationally competitive at the moment, we want to turn them more internationally competitive. So that's are the, the key points uh, of, 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 of skill part. Uh, the second huge area is smart governance, and that's the story. Now you ask me, what is the point of this picture? Good question. Uh, actually, the point is that uh, the average uh, number of interactions between uh, citizens and, and the government per year is 2.6. So basically, free wishes. As a normal citizen uh, turns or wants to act with the government three times maximum per year. And of course, if you are a government officer, you want these free wishes to be sold with the highest standard, to, to, to actually give the, the, best, the best result what you actually are able to give. And this definitely has a problem here. I mean, like, uh, we also have, like, Sweden, more than 3,000 3, uh, e-services, uh, and the government portal is so complicated that you actually need a degree, master degree, to actually navigate there. But, um, and that's, 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 that's the problem. Because, like, building our e-society in Estonia I think we are in the phase where Nokia was in 2006, 2007. Or not, not only Nokia, but the, the whole uh, mobile phone uh, world. I mean, like, every company just wanted to add more and more and more and more functionality in their phones. So the phones actually got very complicated. And then there was one guy coming and saying, like, uh, less is more. And uh, we have to do the same uh, here in Estonia. I mean, like, uh, instead of putting more and more and more e-services up there, we should more actually analyze and then think, like, uh, how to get the best out of that so that the citizen actually feels that uh, it's good to use these government services. The problem is that the government never makes mistakes. Right. You're laughing, but uh, it actually, it's a huge problem. That if you have a public tender, 
if you're using taxpayers' money, you have to do it right in the first place. But with, with in IT world, you cannot get it right in the first place. You even cannot get it right in the second phase. It takes at least three times of trying before you get it right. If you create a bank, uh, e bank, for example, uh, uh, you analyze how the people are actually using your services, and then if, if it doesn't work, you fix it, you make it better. But you can't do it with, with the government services, or you can. So that's the big thing in Estonia, what we have to break, and, and that actually you're actually allowed to do mistakes, and you should re-engineer, re-engineer, re-engineer. Uh, Another example uh, in, 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 in smarter governance, real-time economy. That's the area what we share with, uh, with, with our Finnish brothers again. I mean like uh, two countries trying to solve a similar problem from different angles. I totally like that the Finland wants to get uh, absolutely cash-free country. I mean like you can only uh, uh, pay salaries uh, using uh, the bank transfer, or uh, like just if, if there is no cash, there is very hard to, there is no gray economy actually, like it's very hard to uh, betray a system if, if, if there is no cash. In the Estonian case, uh, we also share that view and, and share that uh, vision. Gee. And uh, the point is that where we would like to get is that, uh, yeah, the, the government sh should be I would say, uh, acting somewhere there automatically so they don't waste time of uh, filling tax reports every month. It just happens, like, automatically. So, uh, and again, like, we, don't, we cannot see, like, for example, if, if, you, if uh, you, you, you buy something and you pay your VAT tax uh, and you have a right to get it back, uh, why you have to wait two, two months? Why it cannot happen instantly? So, um, but the point is why, why we show this picture here is, is that uh, here is an, another important principle uh, what the president uh, mentioned this morning. If there is no one to copy, it's very, the innovation is very expensive. I mean like, uh, Rigo, I think you have to admit that the ID cards that you created and we copied actually in principle, was copied from Swedes. We know that history. Yeah. So you both failed, but we succeeded. Yeah. You you did the expensive innovation part, and we succeeded. But if you are the front runner, and you are the number one and number three, and we are the number twenty-one, then <coughs> it's it's wiser to collaborate, and actually think these kind of things through together and test these kind of initiatives together. We are actually looking closely the thing you have actually have with, with, uh, with the cash. I mean, like, if it actually works, if your society accepts that principle, maybe it's wise to implement it also here. I think you should follow what we are doing at the moment with, with VAT because your split payment solution actually sucks. Big times. But let me tell you later. Why? Yeah. So, actually, creating innovation is very expensive. And, and uh, one point why, why we are here today is that to find the areas, or at least the headlines or headings, uh, where we could collaborate. Uh, in Eason's in e project, that's a project uh, created in the European Union uh, to actually make uh, different countries to. to uh, share data and, and services cross-border more. Uh, there's a huge problem. With Finland, it's okay. Uh, uh, there are like 20 to 40,000 Estonians working in Finland. So Finnish Tax and Custom uh, needs uh, some tax paper from Estonian uh, Tax and Custom. So the person comes to Estonia, gets the paper, takes the ferry, goes to Helsinki, gives the paper, and there's a lady who actually types in the paper all again. Two, highly IT advanced. Okay, one is number one, another is 21, but <laughs> almost highly advanced uh, IT countries like uh, are not able to share information between each other and we still have to do the typing between. Abnormal. 
No, no. Okay, we solved that. I mean, like, uh, I think if it is, if this, do you know, Jan, is, is, this, is the service ready already? Are they actually sharing information already or not? Okay, they're sharing already. Yeah. So, but the, but the point is that, uh, what's the next? What is the next? What is the service between Denmark and Estonia to build? What is the service between Norway and Estonia to build? There's no service. Because if you look at this from business case point of view, you need at least, there should be at, at least 1,000 cases where you need it. Because if there is less than 1,000 cases, then uh, it doesn't, it's a waste, of a waste of money. So is the cross-border service actually dead? Might be. Not. But yes, we, don't, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't think about that. We shouldn't think about big things at the moment. And real-time economy is a big thing. Um, another point from Estonia to, to keep in mind. Uh, and it is uh, one of, I think, uh, one of the cornerstones of our digital agenda is the no legacy policy. The actual thing that blocks you for creating new stuff and actually makes this cost so high, like two billion euros per year for maintenance is legacy. So there are still, if I remember correctly, 5,000 COBOL programmers in Finland. There is zero COBOL programmers in Estonia. So uh, we have been lucky. Uh, we actually saw you struggling with old, old, old programs and old code. And instead of, of uh, copying that, we said like, no. After time to time, you should actually wipe everything off and rebuild it. And if you calculate, and if you, if you look at inside, if you, if you look that, uh, for example, I always do the same example, but it's a good example. Uh, Estonia is uh, ranked highly, higher than Finland in OECD uh, e-health report, uh, e-health services. Uh, but these services were, were mostly built uh, 10 years ago. Ten years ago, the only communication part uh, behind the screen was a keyboard. And this device is six years old, uh, iPad uh, four. So uh, the people habits actually have changed. So we like to do this way or, or that way, uh, or, or tap, or use voice recognition or uh, Similar stuff. Do you, I think you agree with me that uh, like uh, the, the cybersecurity issues has, uh, have changed also during the last 10 years. So if the laws are changing, if the people habits are changing, if the technology is changing, if the cybersecurity part is changing, why the hell we should use this MacIver tape and then and, and, and try to fix one piece here and one piece there. At the end of the day, we just, um, <clears throat> we, don't, we don't even know anymore, like uh, if something broken, why it's broken, and to search for it, why it's broken, takes time, and that's the reason why you have to pay two billion euros per year for maintenance. Actually, it is. So, wipe it off and rebuild. And uh, let's see if we are successful, but we're actually pushing it that in Estonia there, there shouldn't be any meaningful information system in governmental area that is older than 13 years, one free. So the meaningful period for a government uh, registry is 10 years, and then it takes three years to, to rethink and, and rebuild. And it's good to push yourself uh, uh, this way that you actually have to rebuild your software because if you rebuild your software, you also review your proce uh, processes and you review your laws and that all the rest that is around this. So you need that push. So legacy rules, actually no legacy rules. Uh, infrastructure, uh, yes, Estonia will spend uh, uh, enormous amount of money 
luckily European money, so thank you, Nordic countries, for the, your kind support. Um, so, uh, yes, we also want to every household to have 100 megabits minimum, and we will build our network. But what is more important when we talk about infrastructure is this cross-border collaboration. And that was the thing that uh, Rigo already mentioned here, that, uh, that why not we continue to build these basic infrastructure elements together. So we actually could pool, pool, pool together the, the best brains, we can pool together the money, and let's build the next version of our X roads together. So we have Finland and Estonia. We have X-Road here, X-Road there. Pfft. Oba. And the same thing with e-voting, for example. The same thing with ID card, for example, and tools around that, like digital, uh, things that you need for digital signature, whatever. Let's, let's, let's do it together. Actually, we have wrote in our digital agenda that we should create the Nordic Digital Institute. And the point of this institute is actually create these kind of things together. Whoever is participating inside that institute. Of course, I hope that Finland will, go, will join. <laughs> because without you, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> it's meaningless. So, yeah, infrastructure is important. And uh, the fourth area, awareness of E-Estonia. Uh, we are a small country. And uh, there is one neighbor who actually stopped our development for almost 50 years. Uh, so we have to catch up. And to catch up, uh, we need economical growth. And for, econo for economical growth, you need new ideas and you need, uh, think you, you, you need to improve your country's image, for example. And uh, we have seen that E-Estonia can, can improve our country's image. So we continue to work uh, with the idea that even though we are the 21st uh, on that report, uh, we actually know that we are the first one. Yeah, at least the mirror says so. So I have 12 minutes, um, so crazy ideas. Um, I chose a um, couple of them, uh, two about Estonia and, and two about European Union. So the first one is E-Estonian. And the uh, crazy idea what Estonia has at the moment is, and it's not an idea anymore because our government actually uh, passed it, uh, it went through yesterday. So we actually can't say that it's not a crazy idea anymore, it, that's a re real, real thing is that Estonia most probably st this year starts to give out uh, ID cards for uh, non-resident people. So uh, basically people all over the world can have Estonian uh, digital identity and it means that they actually can create a company or, or a bank account or sign documents being on the same time in New Zealand or in Stockholm for example or whenever there's a problem with creating company or running a company. So uh, if you are, are, for example, there's a guy in, from Luxembourg here. If you have a bank account in Luxembourg and you want to uh, do some transactions there, you actually have to fax them the, that please transfer this amount of money to this or that account. There are still e-banks like that actually hack this way. Um, but instead of doing that, why not these people can use Estonian services? So you don't have to be a Estonian citizen to use this kind of service. We are inside European Union, so you can create a company whenever you are. We have more than 1,000 companies created uh, by Finn, for example, in Estonia. So if we have a very easy of doing business, if we have a very transparent and simple tax system, and as you know, in Estonia, we have a uh, flat tax, and uh, if you reinvest your, your, your earnings, uh, you actually don't have to pay anything as a tax. So, quite convenient place to have an investment company. So, that's just one, one example, but uh, the, the concept of E-Estonia is to, to actually think that maybe 
we could somehow take the country and then, then actually tie it off, out or off uh, from, from the territory. So we could have a country without borders. But actually, person from Japan, person from New Zealand, person from Italy, actually is using Estonian government services and is so-called e-Estonian. And at the same time, he can live in, 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 in Italy or, or in, in, in South Africa or, or New Zealand. Why not? So let's see what happens. Uh, let's see how it goes out. Of course, it needs a different type of, uh, of, of, of infrastructure also. So uh, the second idea or crazy idea what we have, and that's not long, also not crazy anymore because uh, the first embassies will be established, uh, I think, even before midsummer. So uh, that's the infrastructure there. So data embassies. If you think about embassy, like real embassy, and now think that the same kind of embassy is inside, for example, Danish government data center. There's an iron cage, and in that iron cage, there are servers, and the servers actually belong to Estonian government. And we actually run our stuff inside there. So we have to build a different kind of infrastructure for this kind of new innovation. Looks good. And about digital Europe, uh, crazy ideas. Uh, I think, uh, see, it was you who actually in, 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 uh, put this, this, this point into the document that in Europe also once only submission of data principle should be uh, implemented. I mean, like if I go to Spain and start, want to start the work in Spain, and they have questions about me, and I know that the student government has that information, so I could say to the uh, Spanish government that uh, please approach the Estonian, uh, uh, Estonian government registries, they have all that information, uh, I, don't, I, I don't have to provide that to you. I mean like, uh, for example, if they need a paper that says that I'm not a criminal, why, ha why I have to carry a paper? Please ask, the information is there. You need uh, to see if, I'm, uh, uh, if I own money to somebody or not, please ask them. So uh, this could be the, I would say, trigger for digital single market in, in, in Europe. We have seen this happening in Estonia. I mean, after 2007, when this rule was uh, implemented, or this law was implemented in Estonia, uh, the, the different ministers actually started to, to collaboration more, and they started to exchange it information more. So why not use the same idea in Europe? Force to build this kind of e-service. Or the second one, 20% uh, of Europeans using digital signature. Very ambitious goal. But if you, if, if you saw the video that the president was showing you today that in Estonia, our scientists have uh, <clears throat> shown and calculated that at least one work week is saved uh, to all uh, working age people. And as a former em entrepreneur, I, I, I cannot, actually I cannot uh, imagine my life without digital signature. So why not the rest of the Europe? How come, why cannot you get this point? Why you can't implement it? And I don't understand. So, yeah, to, to actually turn German, you have to go to Japan because whoever from the big four actually implements a thing like this and sees the benefit of digital signature, everybody will copy this part. Yeah, we might have to go to Japan and then after 15 or 25 years, maybe Germany will learn. But we can also, like President said, do something here in the Nordics. And it's good that, uh, for example, yeah, now, <laughs> now I'm the Baltic guy. <laughs> uh, inside politics, I think uh, we will have the, the same standard uh, next year, during, during next year. So, but if we could have the same standards in, in Nordics also and actually show to the Europe that actually you can save a huge amount of money, might be beneficial for, 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 for Europe also. So, yeah, this was also part of our crazy ideas. And uh, I stop here.
So uh, it was just a very brief story about Estonia. Uh, the president covered all our fancy part uh, in the morning, so I won't repeat that. And uh, I say more time for questions. Please. So the hard part is that we meet with Tawi so much that I have nothing to ask from him. <laughs> so you have to do the job. Do you see any hands? Anything you want to sort of challenge him with or any questions you want to ask about? Anybody? Yes. Can we get a mic here? Ay, ay, ay. That's this was a good that, question, that's, that's I promise <laughs> Hi, Professor Junger from the European Commission. So, a very <laughs> nice presentation. And I'll, don't be scared, I will not raise uh, difficult questions. It's more... You should, though. No, I'm not. I, I've, I, I see wars somewhere else, so I'm not in the mood to enter into wars. Um, you were asking and discussing, and the different members have presented crazy ideas. So, let me suggest one, and to push this logic also further. What about an invisible government? Meaning an administration that's so efficient that you don't even have burdens because the administration will anticipate all your needs. You need a passport, you go to the commune and it happens to be there because they knew it was finished, so you would just get it. And all kinds of activity like that. So to go beyond your once only principle to push completely to the extreme of efficiency. Yeah, it's a very good question. Actually, uh, you have to have a government because you have to have somebody to blame. <laughs> so uh, the government cannot be invisible. But uh, yes, uh, I do totally agree that the best service is the service that actually is not there. That just happens. Smoothly, silently, some hi hidden from your, from your eyes. Just happens. Yeah, that's, that should be the should be the ulti ultimate goal, yeah. Uh, no. But of course, uh, we can move towards that, yeah. But there are several things that can be done. I mean, you always talk about the example of uh, maternal benefit, right? When your child is being born, what happens? Right? Yeah, that's, that's one, but yeah. What we want to do, for example, this real-time economy, like that could be an improvement for, for the companies. Like currently, you have to fill loads of different reports for uh, taxes, for uh, statistics, etc. This can be turned vice versa. I mean, like uh, the Norway, I think it was Norway who said, like, you actually send that if we have this information about you, if you are okay with that, don't do nothing. If you want to change, then go to, go and change. So you actually push information from the government to the companies, not, 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 not like it is at the moment. And I think it can be done in a very simple fashion, if I can compliment you. So we know, for example, in Estonia, that when you hit 63 or 65, you most probably will retire. Why do we have to sort of, you know, us send, why do you have to send us an application for that? So even through these small things, you think it's going to be made sort of invisible. But you know, a good question was raised about, but do we then lose the whole of government? Right? What's your take on that? Is government then being lost in the process for the people? I think, <coughs> I put it differently. I mean, like, um, I like the idea uh, of citizens buying citizenship. Uh, it means that you actually, uh, like, how you act at the moment. You have this phone, you have these different apps here, and these apps are provided by different companies. Uh, one is good for music listening, one is good for uh, pitch editing, etc. So why not you actually can buy the services you actually need from different governments? I mean, like, uh, I run my business under Estonian, using Estonian service and then the Estonian tools. Uh, I like uh, healthcare, what Cuba, for example, offers. Uh, so uh, why, why, not, why not this way? I mean, like, yes, I, I don't understand that uh, you have to get used with this kind of concept, but that I, I see that, that we are more and more so-called global citizens. And if we are called global citizens, then, then why not to buy services that we actually like? I mean, like, uh, the citizen of Monaco barely lives in Monaco. Why? All right. Okay. Is there any other question? Johan, you had a hand up. No? Can we get the mic to the front? Uh, 
I just wanted to comment that, uh, that these uh, services that you don't see do exist actually. Uh, from this uh, log of, the or of your data, you sometimes can see that, uh, that police actually ask the information about, it, about you. When you ask them actually why, then, uh, then it might happen that uh, they will see, that they will answer to you that, uh, that they were seeing you actually driving this kind of car, uh, behaving strangely, uh, um, and they checked actually your status and they didn't stop you. To me, it actually seems like a service that you don't see. So, so it, uh, it does already exist in the, in the real world. The streets were safer in the process. Yeah. So, any other questions? Yes, Mike to the middle. Can you have your hand up? Yeah. yeah. I'm Guy Jakobsen from Innovation Norway. Uh, you talked about a cons consortium for further development. Uh, are you looking for international partners? Yes. What kind of partners? What are you looking for? Each one. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> no, no, actually, uh, whoever is, inter is too interested. But uh, as we have thought that we should, the, the first body we should do together with Finns, then I think Finns have uh, also right here to say which kind of partners they want to see in that collaboration. And they have sort of at least raised an idea that all the Nordics at least, right? Yeah. So uh, if Finns like you, then you are in. <laughs> we like you. <laughs> yes. Hi, Peter Borsat here from Canada. All right. Uh, you talked a lot about e-government and private sector supplying the government. Can you talk a little bit about private industry's adoption of these e-services? Um, first of all, I want to correct uh, or actually add one comment on the president's talk. Uh, 95% uh, of the software that our government currently has is pro provided by private companies. I mean, like, uh, we don't have programmers on our payroll. And I think that's one of the reasons why the IT sector in Estonia is so advanced that we, we actually give, or like, they get, they get experience with, with, with our own stuff. I mean, like, not only from the government side, but also from, 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 from the private companies. But, um, um, e-services in, 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 in uh, I couldn't get the point actually like, so I actually. Do you wanna, yeah. So Add to the citizens are using it to access government services, but what is the adoption of private industry to use these technologies that you have proven in the public sector for private industry? So I think there's sort of two questions. The first, so let's say how well many sort of private digital services are out there, and secondly, sort of again, is the sort of sharing going on of the tools and things and components we have built Hmm, it's a good question. I mean, like, uh, one thing we can say is, is that they don't complain too much. So we have to do something right. Uh, so it means that they are they're using, I mean, like, uh, if, if, for example, for tax declaration or, or yearly report, uh, present your yearly, yearly report, uh, some statistics, that, that all, everything is digital and, and, and happens smoothly. So no, no, no problems with that. To get uh, different permits for your business, uh, yeah, you can actually have it uh, through the internet again. Uh, okay. Uh, private companies uh, using e services for their own business. I mean, like, uh, yes, we have uh, companies that you are use our business register uh, information and, and, and put some extra there and then actually sell it. Uh, open data is not an issue in Estonia too much because even though we have a law that uh, 2015 all the registers, public registers, have to be opened, uh, we don't see a huge business there because the market is very small, like 1.2 uh, million, million. After the e, 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 e Estonian project, it's too big. 1.2 billion, of course, <laughs> but uh, still 1 million. And uh, it's not a market. It's, uh, like we can talk about open data as, as, a, as a business market uh, if, if you talk about Canada or if you talk about UK. Even the Nordics is, is, is not the market enough uh, for, for in, in, in matter of open data. But I think what else is there, so the components that we have used to build sort of really, whether it's digital identity, EID, ah, yeah, or X-Road, yeah, yeah, these are yeah. what the companies are free to use also in, in their services. 
Yeah, of course, uh, authentication and authorization uh, infrastructure that the government provides. That's the, definitely the most used uh, e-service uh, in, in Estonia or like component in Estonia. And digital so, so like in every, so you, uh, you, you might have additional authentication method like bank link, for example, but you have to have uh, the governmental one, I mean the ID card or the mobile ID. I mean, we can just to end on this topic. So, I mean, the example of digital signatures, they're actually most heavily used in private sector, yeah. in, in private business between customers and, and the businesses. So, do I get one more question? The last one, yes, in the back. Very far. Very far. Can we also get you to stand up? Thank you. Actually, very, very far. I'm the guy from Luxembourg, and oh. I'm still waiting for your facts. <laughs> <laughs> you can give it to me now, actually. He actually doesn't know how to send one. <laughs> um, uh, thanks, Tavi, for your presentation. Um, my question was, um, I, I wanted to, you to elaborate a bit more on the scales and how, how, you, how you, don't, you want to develop that, and also to tell us a bit more about um, how you include citizens in your, in your strategy, because I haven't heard a lot about that. And uh, is it, is it some, some kind of a bottom-up approach or, or top-down approach, or is it a very inclusive uh, approach? And did you encounter any difficulties in uh, implementing your, your uh, strategy? Uh, so it's so, sorry, just to clarify, you, by inclusion you mean uh, inclusion in the sort of strategy making or in the actual execution of that, like co-creation and stuff like that? Well, in, in the in, in consulting the citizens and, and maybe uh, okay. understanding what are their, their needs or, or, uh, or, or, or you just have a top-down approach and... You okay, the question was like how the citizens were involved when we created the digital agenda, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, our public relations uh, department uh, did a study after uh, we created this digital agenda uh, 2020 and uh, we got the highest uh, percentage compared with, uh, for example, uh, transportation agenda or energy agenda. So uh, the uh, citizen and especially our uh, IT companies association, uh, they were they were heavily involved, so the, I think the satisfaction percentage was like 80 or something. Yeah, 80 something. So, uh, but see, you, you also, you were there even but, longer than but me. The, but the whole point was that, you know, in order to come up with something like that, uh, you have to be, it's actually more about the process than the outcome. That was sort of the approach. Of course, I mean, that will be a paper and cabinet makes a decision and we present it and stuff. But it was about, let's say, do we reach the point where we have a joint agreement that these are really the directions where we want Estonia to go. Everybody will be on the same page and working for that. So, yeah, yeah inclusion has to, had to be there. All right, Davi, thank you so much and big hand.